Welcome to the spoken tutorial on the importance of golden R and colostrum feeding. In this tutorial, we will learn about golden R and its importance, benefits of feeding colostrum to the newborn. Let us begin by understanding what is golden R. Golden R is defined as the first R of the newborn after its birth. This first R is very critical for the child's growth and development. It is also an important factor in a mother's breastfeeding journey. This period helps to strengthen the bond between the mother and her infant. An uninterrupted skin-to-skin -skin contact should be initiated between the two. What is skin-to-skin -skin contact? Skin-to-skin -skin contact is the best way to initiate early breastfeeding. The infant will attempt to crawl and latch on the mother's breast by itself. This is known as breast crawl, which is explained in detail in another tutorial. Next, let us look at the different stages of breast milk and its composition. The breast milk goes through three main stages. These stages are colostrum, transition milk and mature milk. Each stage is best suited for the changing and growing needs of the baby. We will learn in detail about the first stage which is colostrum. Colostrum is the earliest breast milk produced. It is thick, sticky and concentrated milk. Its color can vary from creamy white to light yellow or dark yellow. It is so precious that it is also known as the liquid gold. Beta carotene present in colostrum is responsible for its yellow color. The breasts begin to produce colostrum in the 12th to 16th week of pregnancy. It starts getting secreted from the breast after delivery. This special milk is secreted only until first 2 to 4 days after delivery. It is secreted in small amounts about 40 to 50 ml only on the first day. This is about 3 tablespoons of milk. Milk starts to be produced in larger amounts between 2 to 4 days. On the third day, the milk supply increases to 300 to 400 ml. This is about 20 to 25 tablespoons of milk. Even though colostrum is secreted in small quantities, it is very nutritious. It is easy to digest which makes it the perfect first food for the infant. It is high in proteins and low in carbohydrates. It is also rich in good fats. These good fats are essential for the growth of the newborn baby. It is also required for proper development of the baby's brain and eyes. Infection-fighting elements are also abundantly present in colostrum. For example, antibodies, lactoferrins, lactadherin and leukocytes. Growth and protective factors are also there. In addition to this, it contains high amounts of vitamin A, E, B12 and K. A large number of white blood cells are also present in the colostrum. It strengthens the baby's immune system and helps fight disease-causing agents. It contains components which help fight bacteria. Colostrum provides immense benefits to the newborn. Let's look at each benefit one by one. Colostrum is the natural first immunization for the baby. Immediately after birth, the newborn is unable to produce its own antibodies. Feeding colostrum is important as it is particularly rich in antibodies. For example, immunoglobulin A, M and G. Among these, immunoglobulin A, known as IgA, 
is the most important. They coat the areas of the baby's organs which are prone to infections. For example, lining of the throat, lungs and intestines. IgA binds to the germs and neutralizes them. This prevents the germs from entering the baby's blood. Colostrum helps in regulating the baby's immune system. It balances the levels of T helper cells in their body. An imbalance in T helper cells can result in allergies and autoimmune diseases. In autoimmune diseases, the immune system attacks the healthy cells in the body. More than 70% of our immunity lies in the gut. Colostrum has a huge role to play in the gut health of the infant. It helps in diversifying the baby's gut environment. This helps in prevention of allergies and asthma later in life. It reduces the risk of inflammation of the intestine. The risk of stress and depression is also reduced. Let us understand how colostrum is beneficial for the gut of the baby. A newborn baby is born with a leaky gut. There are gaps between the cells of the inner lining of the intestine. Through these gaps, viruses, bacteria and allergens can enter the baby's body. Colostrum seals these gaps so that no harmful pathogens can pass through. The lining of the cells of the intestine has a brush-like border. This is known as microvilli. Colostrum stimulates the development and extension of these microvilli. This helps in increasing the absorption of nutrients. Colostrum increases release of mucin from the cells of the intestine. Mucin forms a layer on the lining of the intestinal walls. This prevents the entry of any bad bacteria. The colostrum also contains human milk oligosaccharides known as HMO. They act as prebiotics. This means that they promote the growth of good bacteria in the baby's gut. They block the pathogens from attaching to the cells of the intestine. They are also beneficial for the development of the baby's brain. Feeding colostrum to the infant prepares his stomach for digestion. It acts as a laxative to help the baby pass meconium. Meconium is the first dark black or dark green stool of the infant. It gets built up in his bowels during his time in the mother's womb. Passing this meconium early will also help in preventing jaundice. Meconium contains bilirubin. The laxative properties of cholesterol will help him flush out the bilirubin. If the infant isn't fed well, the bilirubin is reabsorbed from the bowels. It then builds up in his body and results in jaundice. Another property of colostrum is that it has a high number of growth factors such as insulin-like growth factor 1 and insulin-like growth factor 2. They are required for tissue development, repair and growth. Another growth factor which is high in the colostrum is VEGF. It is called the vascular endothelial growth factor. It promotes the growth of new blood vessels. The colostrum is also a major source of epidermal growth factor. It is very important for the normal development of the baby's intestine. It is also essential for repair of the intestine's lining in case of an injury. Thus, it provides protection against intestinal disease in newborn babies. For example, necrotizing enterocolitis, which is known as 
N E C. It is a condition caused due to inflammation of the intestine. Feeding colostrum also helps to prevent low blood sugar levels in the baby. Hence, colostrum feeding is beneficial for the baby. There are a few myths regarding colostrum feeding. The first myth is that colostrum should be discarded because it is stale. This is not correct. Colostrum is neither stale nor is it harmful for the baby. On the contrary, it is very essential for the newborn. It should not be discarded even if there is a delay in breastfeeding. Any delay in breastfeeding the baby will cause a delay in colostrum production. For example, delay due to poor attachment of the baby to the breast. In this case, the mother can express her colostrum and feed it to the baby. She can express using press, compress and release technique. This will prevent unnecessary feeding of prelactial feeds to the baby. Prelactial feeds are any food given to the newborns before breastfeeding is started. For example, honey, water, jaggery, herbal paste, animal milk, formula milk. These foods deprive the child of essential nutrients. It also increases the risk of infections in newborn babies. The second myth is that the quantity of colostrum is less and insufficient. Some people may believe that is not enough for the baby. Many women interpret that their breast milk production is inadequate. This is not correct. The breast milk production is usually in line with the infant's needs. Infants require very small amounts of milk in the first few days after birth. Their stomach can hold about 20 milliliters on day 1. Thus, the mother should continue feeding frequently. For the first few days, the infant should be breastfed around 10 to 12 times a day. Gradually, after a few days, the milk production will increase. On the fifth day, the mother's breasts start producing transitional milk. It is the second stage of breast milk which is bluish white in color. It is produced until two weeks after delivery. It contains a mixture of both colostrum and regular breast milk. After two weeks, the breast starts producing the mature milk. It is more watery as compared to colostrum and transition milk. Though it is less concentrated, it is still nature's perfect food for the baby. Remember that exclusive breastfeeding should be done up to 6 months. When the baby completes 6 months, complementary food should be started. It should be given along with breastfeeding. Breastfeeding should be continued till 2 years or beyond. The benefits of it last a lifetime for both mother and the infant. This brings us to the end of this tutorial. Thanks for joining.